So I remember someone telling me this years ago, and it's more of a political statement, that our generation is a generation of users, that the generations before us were the generations that built our environment. We're using that environment, that infrastructure, and we're not replacing it. There has been a huge shift over the past 50 years from suburbia to urban. And with that shift, I think is also a change in the way cities have to function. More than 80% of the American population lives in urban and metropolitan areas. And as these cities are densifying, mayors and planners and civic leaders are beginning to look at parks to help them address our pressing urban infrastructure challenges. Power, water, transportation, waste are really those systems that allow us to live together well in cities. Green infrastructure is using natural systems instead of the concrete and steel to provide as many of those services as we can. The idea is looking at how we can more effectively manage stormwater but within the context of using a park uh, or some sort of green space that can serve multiple purposes. It serves as a park, a space where people want to congregate and it's a beautiful area people want to walk through. But also underneath it, there's this infrastructure that allows you to really effectively manage stormwater. Along the Atlanta Beltline, we have the Old Fourth Ward Stormwater Park. The original plan for that was something between 30 and $40 million to build a big underground tank underneath a 16-acre municipal parking lot. Its job was to simply hold the stormwater until a storm had passed and then slowly release it back into the system but so you don't overflow the sewer system and dump raw sewage into the river. That would have cost $40 million to implement that solution and thankfully there were other designers who decided to look for a different approach, look for a green approach. So we're sitting in the part that was dug out to hold on to stormwater. In fact, last week it rained and the whole thing filled up. You can see the lines on the wall. That's a 100 and 500 year flood line. It's designed to flood that much and hold that much water. This green infrastructure, which is a pond system, cost $24 million. So therefore there was savings of $16 million you also have the generation of economic development around it. All of this economic development has resulted in well over $500 million in private investment. Anytime you get a return on investment north of two or three, you're probably doing pretty well. We're north of 10. That's unheard of. And I think when you put all this together, it sort of is a confluence that has just made this a quintessential development for public open space and green infrastructure. We used to always call the idea of getting to the river the big disappointment because you would walk down Broadway, get to the river, look around and go, nothing to do here, and walk back. There was a recognition among city leaders, urban planners, parks folks, that the Cumberland River was an untapped resource in downtown Nashville. Our perspective is that we're looking at how can we use green infrastructure to better enhance the quality of life for the citizens within a city. Whether it was geothermal energy, which lies under the entire green, or whether it was that almost 400,000 gallon water harvesting tank that sits underneath the performer space. And then you always think about what's my cost? If we're able to reduce those long-term operations cost, being able to use a city's funds as efficiently as possible and build that into the design, I think was really important. We are the Bayou City, and we're very much proud of that. And over the years, over the last 180 years, the city has been built pretty much around those bayous. For the past not quite 100 years, uh, but certainly just prior to World War II, we experienced two catastrophic floods, one in 1929 and one in 1935, that really changed people's attitudes about the bayous. They were really just considered drainage ditches and several of them were lined with concrete. This is the joke I always have when I'm out talking to individuals. So uh, when I first got into this field, I thought that uh, concrete lined channels were beautiful channels. Years later, I thought that uh, to become environmentally friendly, we would paint the concrete green. 
And so now over time, I'm beginning to realize that there are significant benefits to the community if you can modify the infrastructure to still provide the protection that you want, but somehow have a multiple use of the same facility. We are now in the process of opening up thousands of acres of, of green space for recreation and for parks. And they serve many different functions. We have flat topography, so the bayous help with mitigating flooding, and that's, that's an important factor. But now, they are part of our recreational system, health and fitness, wellness, they are part of that. I think more and more we're seeing a holistic approach to these systems, and function can actually be beautiful. It's a win-win for everyone when you approach things in that way. There's been a lot of discussion in our field about whether green infrastructure saves money over gray. There's an equation that has two factors when you're looking at an expenditure. One is cost and the other is benefit. So even if the cost is about the same, the other half of the comparison is for the dollar, what are you getting for it? And that's where we think green infrastructure cleans up, parkland cleans up. When you build a park, you of course are creating jobs that are related to construction and design and planning, but parks stay around. And so there is an ongoing job creation component in the creation of any park. So you build a road, for example, primarily to get from A to B. Well, you can build a park that helps with mobility, getting from A to B, but also serves a purpose of a stormwater management system. It can serve a purpose of improving the health of a community around it. And it can also serve the purpose of really improving the economic vitality of the community that it's in. And so we view parks as multifaceted in terms of really serving the purposes of multiple infrastructure systems.